It's a great pleasure to be here at, um, and to, to be, be able, able to talk, talk about, about uh, social finance. And um, I'm so happy that Ute uh, asked me to talk only about challenge and opportunities and not to provide answer because as a researcher, you know, we only always start with on one hand, on the other hand, and maybe. So today it's only about challenge and I'm sure Anna will provide some answer, hopefully. So, okay, so um, the first thing is like, uh, let me say, when I start to work on this topic, I thought, is it a special case, social entrepreneur? Are you so special? And I, in the beginning, I was like, well, it's an entrepreneur and with some social dimension. But actually, uh, the more I work on it and the more I'm wondering and also working on financing and trying to understand, is it difficult? And it seems to be, I will show you that it is a challenge to find the right financing. So um, really, let me show this. I understood. It's like all, you have two foot and one is on social, but the other one is on business. And I, I do believe that the first challenge here is that you're on both, on, on, on two, two really think, and, and that's the issue for those people who want to finance, but they're a little bit confused. Okay, so, so I, will, I will say that this is, but also it's exciting because that's mean that, okay, so we used to have market, so it was clear, right? You needed the revenue, debt, equity, that sounds good, serious. On the other hand, you had non-market. That was grant, donation, donation kind. So you had do the two different worlds, and really it was easy for everyone. Either you would go for the market, or you would go for the non-market. That was clear. But the thing is, in reality, it's not that clear, and especially with you guys. So the problem is that you already had a lot of multiple financial mode, but really what was important is also suddenly there was new need, right? And I think this, the panel uh, this morning and, and also the talk that Joanna made, it's, it's so diverse. We need so much, so different tools. And that's why I think it, it's worth um, really uh, pointing that there's fun financial innovation and there's, there's different type of way to finance social entrepreneurs. And it's kind of this palette that make it really interesting to look at it, but also from a research per, uh, point of view, it's, it's really a little bit challenging because uh, at some point we know it's not, not enough, enough to say on one hand or on the other, and we need to provide answer, but right now, honestly, today, I'm only going to say this is a little bit the status fact. This is what we can say from our sample. And I hope like, we can exchange and, and you can say, well, this is not my case. But, so let me just say that this is a little bit how the picture looks. So now if we go to our sample, and I think it's, it's, it was really challenging. We've been working on uh, really heavily and this is a teamwork, so it's not fair for all my team because I'm the one presenting, but they really did the work uh, where we really try to collect information, how social entrepreneurs finance their business, right? And um, so it's confusing because there's a lot of number here and, and I was not sure which one I should focus, but I, I just wanted to say that this is a lot of diversification. This is a different ways how you finance the business. You can have fee and sales and you can see already this picture. So it's a lot of number, but already you see that different country, different situation, right? Which is not surprising because of course it will come back you have uh, different institutional rules, you have different constraints, different boards. So of course, uh, for some country, like Spain, uh, fees and sale are really crucial for their financing. But uh, for other country, like Romania, this seems to be not so crucial, right? And again, it's, it's just a snapshot of one year. We don't know how it's gonna look like in 10 years. Huh? Uh, if you look at investment, uh, well, so it's, everything is relative, right? So investment is not so big, but still China is sticking out. Um, actually, um, one of our colleagues, Ashton, I, I asked him, why, why is that? Is it something special about China? He's like, well, like always, 
you need to look in the detail. And the thing is that he told me that in China, for really um, beginners, for, for, for really at the early stage for an entrepreneur, and especially for social entrepreneur, it is really difficult to find finance. So you are a self-founder, right? So that's why it, China is sticking out a little bit. Now, if you look at grants, obviously uh, Sweden and also Portugal, they, the, the social entrepreneur that we interview, uh, they, they rely quite heavily, more than one third, on, on their grant. Okay, so it's interesting. This is, uh, this is not, not, it's not so much different. In China, it's not so the case. But, you know, I highlight uh, Portugal and Sweden, but obviously, you know, United Kingdom is, is not far away, right? So uh, we can say that grant plays a role. And uh, in terms of donation, I think we see much more difference here because actually in, in Germany and, and Romania and, and Russia, so, so it's also interesting different type of country, uh, you can uh, see that donation is also part of uh, what I will say the, the, the business model. Huh? Okay, um, if you now go by sector, so, so you can slice the data, and this is what I'm only doing, it's like, okay, in which direction we slice the data, you can see, okay, so let's look at different sectors. So first when I got this slide, I was like, wow, okay, can I say something a little bit more interesting that just is diversify, right? The thing is that if you look at private sector cell and public sector cell, you see that in some country, you actually have some, um, uh, that is kind of equivalent, and in some countries there's a clearly domination of the public sector sales or the private sector sales. But let's go a little bit deeper because I think this graph is a little bit difficult to see. But let's see, in terms of uh, source of liquidity, uh, if you look at again across a uh, country, then you see that actually um, the private sector sale is quite dominant in almost all country, but you have country like Hungary where it's just equal, right? Can we draw something? Can we say something about this? Again, I don't have uh, the issue. I just wanted to say that different countries seem to have different type of financing mode, which is not su so surprising, but I think it's interesting to stress. In terms of um, sectors now, um, Again, if you try to slice the data per, by sector, you see that actually, uh, not surprising, business activity relies more on uh, fee and sale. Uh, I was also interested to see that in terms of education, um, actually, it's also about fees and sales, although you have grants that play in your role. And, um, and this is also the case in health and uh, social work, right? So again, there's this multi, multiple funding, and I, and I will say, uh, if you think about the risk, this is a good news, that you're able to diversify also the financial risk, okay? So this is maybe one, one takeaway here is that, yes, it's challenging because you have different uh, way to finance social enterprise, but because it's so special, then you can diversify risk. And then, <clears throat> I will say, I need to conclude and say, okay, what is the challenge? So I want to provoke a little bit. So are you the shark or the small fish? Uh, I don't know. But, but I just wanted to stress that, and this is important when we, so this is what we started to see and we look at a little bit carefully in our data now. There is a, uh, at least when we talk to social entrepreneurs, there's a risk that there's a mission drift, right? So when you're looking for financing, and uh, I wish I could show you also what is there, whether it's at early stage or less early stage and so on. Of course, there is some. But I think there is a risk here that uh, because you need finance, finance uh, you will, um, your social mission is not going to be the first thing you're looking at. And, and we hear things like we need to provide measure, we need to show, we need to speak about the same language as the investor. Right? So, so this is, and, and I understand, because you need finance. But... Again, so I, I just would like to conclude and, and by the, so there's only not one challenge, but many, and I'll let Anna answer. Uh, of course, this is the, <laughs> the balancing a social mission with the string attached to funding, right? So this is, I think, one of the biggest challenge. 
Uh, the other challenge, and maybe we can discuss later, and is really this idea that, okay, you, you have to have a social impact investment uh, business plan. Uh, which measure, how you show that you're good, huh? that people can trust you. Uh, you, you have, you're looking for different uh, sources of capital and, 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 and also to scale up, to rely on, on what Joanna was saying. So, so obviously if you're in the beginning, you don't need the same financing as, as if you're scaling up. Should you combine, should you change? This is also a risk. Huh? And the fourth one is, is, so this is a little bit less uh, talk about, but when we discuss with social entrepreneur, and I, I'm, I really like to hear from you, it seems like um, a lot of people complain that um, social entrepreneurs do not apply. So there's money, but, they, um, but then the thing is that it seems to me that it's also a lot of work to apply for money. So I know I'm a researcher, it's a lot of work, but, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but I think uh, you, maybe you need some support on this and also just to make sure that uh, to get those grants, to get those government contracts that is just six months, but this is a long run, of course a big grant, then you need to, this taking up a lot of your resources. So I think that's, I will stop here and invite Anna to comment. Easy job, no? <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. Thanks for switching the order at the end. That's really helped. Um, so I'm from Unlimited. We're a foundation that supports social entrepreneurs. So I'm not a social entrepreneur. Um, but we support around 800 social entrepreneurs a year um, with cash and with non-financial support, both directly and through a range of partners who are embedded in different communities across the United Kingdom. Uh, the majority of the social entrepreneurs that we support are social entrepreneurs who are just starting out on their journey. They may be testing, exploring, piloting, possibly growing an idea. A very small proportion of the social entrepreneurs we support, we work with very closely to scale their venture and grow their social impact. And we've worked with around 120 of these social entrepreneurs over the last four years, and it's looking at those social entrepreneurs and the challenges that they have faced that I'll be drawing on the, the insights from that today. So although it's only quite a small um, sample and just in the UK, uh, the, the reflections that Chloe's drawn out from the research resonate very strongly with what we observe through practice when we're supporting our social entrepreneurs and the challenges that they face when they're trying to access finance. So if we take the, um, the, the first challenge, the kind of shark and fish challenge around social mission with strings attached, we absolutely recognize that as a challenge for our social entrepreneurs. And I thought it was be beautifully illustrated with the picture at the beginning. It's hard enough for social entrepreneurs to access finance and, and balance what they need to do to grow their social business while also paying attention to the social impact when they're just focusing on what they need to do for their business, let alone if they're drawn into uh, the mission or the funding re requirements or reporting requirements of um, other organizations. So we certainly do see that as a, a significant issue and the support that we provide our social entrepreneurs is partly structured um, to help them navigate that and stay true to their mission. Um, the, the other thing I would say on that is, um, is that around legal structures, that um, the legal structure of the social enterprise um, can limit the funding that that social entrepreneur can, can go for. And at Unlimited, we're agnostic in legal structures because we recognize that some legal structures are um, more able to access funding down the line. And so to avoid the, um, the mission drift that Chloe alluded to, we um, work with social entrepreneurs to lock in their social impact with the social mission lock, um, which I'd be happy to, to, to talk more about if people are interested. So that's the first challenge. The second one about social impact investment and the measurement of social impact is also something that, we, um, that I, I really recognize. Um, yeah, I've written here the tyranny of standards of evidence. 
So I, obviously random control trials are great in their place and they can generate fantastic insight for research, but they're not always um, relevant for our social entrepreneurs, especially those who are trying to introduce preventative solutions, and particularly in the health and social care space. Um, we, they find that they're stymied, particularly when selling into um, NHS, uh, schools and other organisations where procurement is very heavily risk managed um, and for us it's one of the most significant barriers that our social entrepreneurs report annually. We've um, just developed um, a piece of work with the Academic Health and Science Network and the Design Council in the UK which is uh, an experimental piece of work which is looking to tackle this specific barrier in the southwest by doing some um, co-produced work with the commissioners down in the southwest to actually get them onto the the panels while we're spotting social entrepreneurs while we're supporting social entrepreneurs in the hope that through working with them in a different way and through upskilling the social entrepreneurs through working with the academic health and science network that we can start to bridge some of that gap and we'd, we'd hope to see that the routes to market is um is kind of opened up a little bit but that's absolutely a, a significant challenge um the third one, mixing different sources of capital. Um, again, this is um, something that at Unlimited we, we definitely see and we, we actually think is quite a strength. So I guess maybe it falls more into the opportunity side of, um, of, of Chloe's analysis. Um, so I said we support, we've supported around 120 social entrepreneurs to access investment. So we effectively operate as an intermediary and for every pound of money that they raise, we match fund. Um, so in total, those social entrepreneurs have raised uh, 12.3 million over the last four years. And that's about two to one balance between a blend of debt and equity of around 8 million and then grant funding and the rest. And critically, we have found that the grant funding is an essential element in enabling the social entrepreneur to leverage uh, the debt and equity, uh, not least because it de-risks in part the investment for um, for the investor. Um, we've um, we've also observed that the the challenges around trying to draw down and understand those different sources of funding and think about what that means for your business model has led to an increasing number of social entrepreneurs who are not just looking at blended finance, but who are also looking at blended business models, which is then adding further complexities to the market. Um, and then the fourth one, the time it takes to actually do this. Um, in some of the interviews that, that um, my team have conducted, uh, just to try and understand what it really feels like to um, try and access finance, social entrepreneurs are, are Kind of speak very powerfully about feeling that they're being torn in half or the one hand trying to run their business and uh, deliver for their beneficiaries while on the other hand trying to work out what they need to do to access the finance so we absolutely recognize this, that that as a challenge and would also say that a long time as well as bidding for grants and government contracts um, raising investment always also takes an awful lot of um, resource so then the final thing that I thought it might be helpful to, to draw out was a, a couple of other observations that we have had um, around additional challenges to accessing finance for, for social entrepreneurs in the UK. And the first one's about jargon. Um, and I thought um, Naomi from the Bluebird Foundation spoke very eloquently about um, this this morning. Um, social entrepreneurs and investors absolutely speak very different languages and often when they say the same thing they mean completely different things. Um, and without a translator that process can be extremely onerous and potentially we find that social entrepreneurs are sometimes in danger of agreeing to deals where they don't actually really know what they're committing to um, or the deals fall apart at the very end, you know, potentially at the end of six months of, of, of hard work or more. So. For, for us at Unlimited, that's a, that's a challenge that we recognise and we try and offer support to social entrepreneurs to be a mediator in that, but also work with investors to try and upskill or teach the investors around the, the kind of language so we start to develop that sense of a shared 
uh, language. So we have a, a network of, of investors that we go back to and work with who are kind of over the last four years have become increasingly aware of um, social entrepreneurs and, and what it means to invest in them. And then the final thing I would say is, um, is something that we talk about quite a lot, um, which is maybe just in the UK, putting a little bit of a tighter lens on of all of those social entrepreneurs who are, who are trying to access finance, who, which are the group who are, who are really, really struggling. Um, and, and we talk about the, the missing middle. So it's the people, and I think again, um, from Naomi's um, description of, on the one hand, the Swiss investors saying that it's, it's too small, and the hung Hungarian investors saying it's too expensive. Um, it's the missing middle. It's those people who are prepared to invest in those smaller organisations um, um, who, who are really struggling. It's expensive to lend at that level. It's risky. Most of the social entrepreneurs operating in that space don't have the capital, and they, they can't um, meet the reporting requirements of, of investors. And it requires patient capital. and. Um, often investors aren't prepared to be patient. Um, so, I guess the final thing we would say is that capital isn't enough, access to finance isn't enough. To make that really work, you need intensive support alongside access to that, that sort of finance. And, and that is, a, is another significant challenge. Once the social entrepreneur has got that finance, they they're most likely to need support in execu executing their growth plan, in developing appropriate governance, in managing their cash flow. And, and so to talk about access to finance without access to intensive support um, is, is kind of, um, well, it's nice to talk about both. <laughs> that's, that's it. Thank you, Hannah. Um, you tackled that challenge very well. Um, so we have a very uh, a brief time for one or two questions uh, from the audience. Um, <laughs> if there are any, for Hannah or Chloe. Yeah, Simon? My question's about the length of finance. So in my experience, having the, ch having the choice of having a lot of money in one year and having half of that money but spread over three years, I'd rather take the second option. So just a reflection on not the amount but actually the certainty over a period of time. Yeah. yeah, hi. Uh, I've just got a question about uh, return on investment on financing. Um, do, do you find that generally there's a, a focus towards one or the other in terms of uh, financial return as opposed to non-financial return in terms of altruistic goals or is it like a combination of the two? Yeah, let's talk um, about the, the data first. Um, so yeah, it's a good point. No, so I, I, I'm I'm too quick here, and and we we just uh, we collect and got the data set really. But I agree with you. It's it's so much. Uh, we need to distinguish between the size, how much you get, but also how much time you have to spend it. And uh, so so, of course, uh, the 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 thing is also like if you if you have two years, uh, uh, the problem is not a problem, but. Uh, I, I, I've been talking to some social entrepreneurs and they say, well, if I, we don't accept this money now, it's not sure that half of the money now doesn't mean that we'll get the half of the money the next year. So there's this uh, behavioral decision that you need to say, okay, how I assess my risk. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm with you on this, but uh, so it would be interesting actually to look a little bit more. Um, about, so um, I'm not sure, so you you asking, um, can you, um, can I ask you again, because you're asking private and, and uh, public sector? Well, I've, I'm just thinking from the point of view, so for example, if I was an investor in a traditional company, um, I'd be looking at return on investment and internal rate of return and things like that. But obviously the social enterprise, it's the return is a bit different, isn't it? It's more to yes. do with other criteria, which is not yes. financial. So I was just wondering, you know, whether you have a dashboard to understand the different benefits derived from investing. Um, as an investor? Yes, yeah, so uh, how you measure your return, huh? so this is your question, I think. Uh, of course, it has to be different, and, and we're discussing, and actually Marieke is going to talk about how you can measure the social impact, what you should expect. So in terms of what you should expect and a return, we, we need to have another model. We don't, I, 
I don't have the answer now, but uh, it needs to be something more than the traditional return index, if you want. Yes, we are aware of this, but it is also important for the investor to have the some measure, right? To take some risk. Uh, so that's how you assess risk is also an issue. Thank you. Uh, just to add to that second um, question in terms of the investors that we work with, um, finance trumps social impact um, without a doubt. So there will, the investment will only be successful if they can see a clear path through to the financial return. Um, it's un we're, we're bothered about the, um, the social return and it's unlimited who would force the social mission lock whether or not an, a, a company limited by shares has a social mission lock doesn't really put off, in our, my experience, the, the investors. So really that's still at the forefront and a lot of the work that we try to do with investors is to try and redress that balance because until that shift happens, it's always going to be an uphill battle. Thank you both very much. Um, we're going, yeah, round of applause. It's, uh, thank you.